So here's a quick walkthrough of the album we're making. There's also a full walkthrough video where I go a little bit slower, so you can um, hit the link in the description and you'll find that as well. But I just wanted to quickly show you what we're making just so you have some context while we're going through um, the album itself. So we're making this six by nine album and exact measurements are in the tutorial, obviously. So it's a sideways flip fold and it opens up um, and I'll show you section by section. So we've got the bottom, with a, a little waterfall inside. Then we have this middle section which opens up and then does all kinds of fun things. So on the left, we have a flap out section with a pocket and some cards and another pocket down below. And then over here in the center, this opens up and we have two um, little booklets for lots of photos and journaling and space for a larger photo in the back. So I hope that you guys like that quick little walkthrough. If you want more detail, there'll be the other video, of course. Um, but without further ado, let's get started on the tutorial. Hey guys, so here's the materials we're gonna be using for this album. Um, I am getting rid of scraps, but if you don't have both of these kits, then just one of them, one or the other will do. Um, and you'll see if you're wanting this sort of seaside ocean theme. Um, I'm using Graphic 45's Catch of the Day collection. So this is their collection that they released, I think, this year. And it's just gorgeous. If you've sort of been onto the East Coast, um, I'm taking using this album for a trip we took on the east coast of Canada. Lighthouses everywhere, just gorgeous fishing paper. And then I also have some sheets left of this paper, uh, which is an older line, also from Graphic 45, called By the Sea. And it is very similar in color tone, so I'm going to be using a couple of sheets of this as well. Um, in all, if you want to just stick with one or the other, you just need one of the kits, um, that one of one of their uh, collection kits. So the other thing is we're going to use uh, it's 110 pound cardstock. Okay, so that's 110 pounds is the thicker one. And then, of course, just as a reminder, we'll use some double sided tape. So I have here a half inch and a quarter inch thickness. Um, you don't really need both. If you are only going to get one, um, I would recommend um, the three eighths of an inch, actually, which is actually what this one is, not a quarter. And also my very favorite art glitter glue, which dries really well. So I don't use both. Okay, and we'll go through that when we're doing the album. I don't use both together because the, either the glue is quite sticky as it is. But anyways, those are the materials we're gonna need for this project, so let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started um, with making the base of the album. Just a couple of quick tips that I wanna share. First of all, when I read out the measurements, I always read out height by width, okay? So we don't get confused of which direction we're gonna turn things. And hopefully that helps with the scoring as well, but I'll be very clear about which side to score on. But I just wanna make sure you know that. The other thing is that um, we will stick the book together as we go. So I don't cut all the pieces first and then label them and put them aside. I just find that's not, not for me. Um, we cut, uh, we put our double-sided tape on, we glue, and we're finished, and we keep moving on. And by the time the tutorial is over, you'll have the whole album put together. Um, I do want to just note, I had had a few people ask me to do um, a tutorial for the Cartabella Metropolitan Girl album. So this is going to be exactly the same as that album. I will just be using different paper, of course. But if you are interested in that, then this is the video for you um, to follow along with. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is the outside of the album. So the top flap um, with the spine, the back, and then the bottom flap with the spine. So let's start out first by cutting out our top flap. So for this piece, we're going to measure six and three quarters by nine. So I'm just going to line this up. Six and three quarters by nine. And so this is going to be um, our top cover and we're going to add a spine here and also a little half inch piece to attach it. So we're going to score along here. So I'm gonna put my paper up and down in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score in two places at half an inch and then again at, at um, one and three quarter inches because I am gonna be making a half inch spine. Okay, so I've got my scoreboard here. And so, as I mentioned, we're going to score in two places at half an inch. And this is um, where we're going to attach this to the back of the album, to the base. 
and then I'm going to score at one and three quarters because that will give me my one, um, sorry, what am I saying? Not one and three quarters. Uh, yes, yes, one and three quarters. Oh my gosh, guys, sorry. Yes, because that is actually giving me my uh, one and a quarter inch spine. So right there. Okay, and then just a note about how to fold this for burnishing. Um, we scored this on this side, so you want to fold in because what's happening, the reason you're scoring is stretching the paper on the outside so it doesn't crack. So the part that you have the little bump is the part that you fold out on the outside. Okay, so fold in towards where you scored. Okay, and I didn't know that. Somebody actually posted that up in commentary in one of my um, past tutorials. So thank you uh, for doing that, one of my lovely subscribers. And... I didn't know. I was just always doing that, but I didn't really know the reason why. And sometimes I did backwards. And I've never had my paper crack, but you know what? Much better. Okay, so this will become the top flap. And I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to cut the back base of the album. So the back base is uh, just, actually, it's the same size. So we're going to cut six and three quarters by nine again. So six and three quarter inches is our height. By nine inches is the width. Okay, so that is the back base of the album. And let's go ahead and attach these now before we do the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my double-sided tape. And in this case, I'm using three eighths um, of an inch. So it's slightly under half an inch size. And I find this is the perfect size for these sort of half inch. If you use the half inch tape, it actually um, covers a bit too much. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stuck on my tape, but I've put it on the inside because I want this, um, the way I want to construct this is I want my piece that's attaching to be on the outside of the back because I'm going to end up covering this up with paper and I just think it's more sturdy rather than having it sitting like this and then you kind of get um, a little bit too much wear here. So I'm putting it over the back like that. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna peel off a little corner because uh, I don't wanna commit all the way. This will let me line up my, my two pieces. So I'm just lining up just slightly, slightly to the left of the score line so I can still see the score line because that will allow this to have like a nice fold. The paper won't get in the way of itself. Okay, so I'm just lining everything up here Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of hold it gently while I start to pull this tape out. And this really allows you to kind of make any adjustments as you go. So see here, I need a little bit of an adjustment. There we go. Okay, so we already have our top flap and base back of the album. All right, let's go ahead and cut the bottom piece. So the bottom flap includes another spine for attachment. So that's going to be six and a quarter by nine. So it's slightly um, shorter. So let's go ahead and cut that. Six and a quarter by nine. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and score this at half and one and three quarters as well all along um, the long side, okay? So you put your short side up against the top of your scoreboard and then score at one quarter and one and three quarters, like we did the other side. Okay, I just wanna make sure, because this, um, this paper is pretty thick, so I wanna make sure I get a good score line there. Okay, just move that to the side. And again, I'm just going to fold this in. Okay. And once again, um, just get your, your score knife and just make sure they're nice and folded. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my score tape the same as I did for the top. And remember to put your score tape on the inside here. Now we can go ahead and attach this to the bottom. So same method, just 
going to pull out a corner and line this up. Okay, I'm going to move this a little bit closer. You want to make sure that you're right up against the top edge just so everything's nice and lined up. That looks good. And just pull out this piece. And there we go. So this is already our bottom flap and top flap of the album okay and our so and our base so now we can start to work on the other pieces so the next piece i want to work on is the waterfall that was sitting down here attached to the bottom flap so i'm just going to set this aside for now okay so for the bottom waterfall we're going to cut four pieces exactly identical so um if you're using eight and a half by eleven um, paper, go ahead and cut it in half at four and a quarter. Okay. And then we're going to turn it around and cut at three and three quarters. Okay. So I have a piece that measures um, four and a quarter by three and three quarters. Okay. Um, let's cut two, three more like that, okay? So keep going on your same piece of paper. Slide over to three and three quarters. There's two. And you should have, actually the last piece is too small, so just put that aside. Take your other half, which is now cut at four and a quarter, and then measure over again, three and three quarters. And one more, three and three quarters. Okay, so I just cut out four pieces that are four and a quarter inches tall by three and three quarter inches wide. Now I'm going to score each of these at half an inch. Okay, so we're going to line up the short side, the three and three quarter inch side across on the top of our scoreboard. The four and three quarters is um, down the side. Sorry, four and a quarter. I don't know why I keep saying four and three quarters. So four and a quarter is down this way, three and three quarters is across the top, and we're just gonna score them at half. So we're gonna do all of them at half. One. Oops, goodness. Two. and four okay oops set my scoreboard aside and so i'm just going to go ahead and fold each of these and get my score tape on so what i want you to do is fold them all um, and then put your score tape along this side and when we come back i'll show you how to put them into the album Okay, so we're back and I have my folio base that we just put together. I'm going to open it up and we're working on this bottom section here. So you should have your four little waterfall cards all cut out and they're going to be installed down along the bottom. Now, before I do this, I just want to say something. If you like to have more waterfall cards, then go ahead. You can keep stacking this up until you reach this edge. We are going to create a fold over piece to keep them all shut. But if you'd like to have more, do so. Um, just for bulkiness sake, I don't know if I would put more than another three. So maybe maximum seven um, over here. I'm leaving mine like this because I would like to use a four by six card as my closure flap, which I can put a picture on the back of. Um, so that's why I'm only using four. But if you want to use more, go ahead. The other thing is, if you want to make these bigger and make them four by six, you can definitely do that as well. Okay, so I've um, made these into the, the three by four cards because that's what I'm going to be decorating and covering them with. But let your paper guide you and decide how you want to do it for yourself, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and attach our waterfalls. So I'm going to, the way I do this is, again, I just peel off um, one corner of my 
tape so that I'm not committed. And I'm not putting this right up to the edge. I'm just sort of coming in, um, let's call it like an eighth of an inch from the edge and also from the bottom, okay? So really important that the first one is lined up well. If you're nervous, you can just draw a little line and pencil to go along. Um, but I'm eyeballing it and I've done this tons, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and hopefully it's fine and it looks pretty good. Okay, so we're just gonna keep attaching the other one. So the next one, same thing, just peel off a little corner. Like that, so it's on the outside here. And again, now I'm, I'm going to butt this edge up to the bottom of this flap here that we just stuck on. So line that up. I'll make sure it's nicely lined up. Now here's what you want to do, okay? Make sure it's straight along the bottom. Fold the top one over and just make sure they look aligned. All right? Make sure everything looks nicely lined up. Okay, once that's done, you can pull out your tape. There we go. And I just like to give it a burnish. Okay, and we carry on like that until we have them all stuck in. Okay, so we'll just do one more and then you could do the last one on your own and we'll move on to other parts of the album. There we go, line it up. The thing with the waterfalls is like if the first one goes in wrong and crooked, they all get like slightly progressively more crooked which is kind of a pain, but I like this um, this way of doing it. Okay, so go ahead and put your fourth one in and um, we're gonna move on to make the flap for the right side. Okay, so for the right side, I'm going to make um, a card that's uh, going to measure the same height as the waterfall, so it's gonna be four and a quarter, but it's going to be seven and a half um, seven and a half inches wide, okay? So let's go ahead and cut that out. So we are four and a quarter inches in height and seven and a half inches width, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and score that at half an inch along the short side. So we'll run long side across the top, score that here. We will do our magnet placement later. For now, we're just gonna um, build out the pieces and then we will figure out where we need to put magnets. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna put my score tape on the back of this flap. Now this bottom part is slightly different than my Metropolitan Girl because um, like I mentioned, I'm using, I know I'm putting in uh, three by four cards here with Metropolitan Girl. I think I had different size cards that I used. So that's what I mean about sort of making it your own depending on what you're gonna do with the album. But it's very, very similar. Okay, so now I'm just gonna line these up over here about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And I'm making sure that it's lined up with the top and bottom of the cards on the left-hand side. And I'll just pull out my score tape. Okay, and there we go. So um, that's it. So when this album comes together, we'll be putting a magnet here and here to keep it closed. Um, I may actually change it up when I decorate. There's other ways to keep things closed that don't use as many magnets, which I actually really like. So maybe we'll do that here when we get to that piece. All right, so next piece we're going to work on is our left side fold out. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the piece that folds out from the left hand side here. So I'm just gonna set the album aside for a second. Okay, so for that side fold out um, with the pocket, you're gonna cut a piece that measures six and a half inches tall by nine and three quarter inches wide, okay? So let's go ahead and cut that. So at six and a half by nine and three quarters. Okay, let's put that over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and score this along the side at half and at one inch. Okay, so 
So um, put your long side across the top and score this at half and then at one. So I'm creating, um, you'll notice then, this part will be to attach to the back and then we have a half inch spine. Um, and that's so that this section um, will have give enough space to the middle section to fit nicely underneath it. So that's why I need a bit of a spine here. In case you're wondering what we're up to. So let's just fold that up. Okay, just bring back my album. So open up your, your album. And then we're going to attach this uh, like so, right here. Okay, so let's put our tape on the inside. Okay, there we go. And just fold back a little corner and line up like we do just to the right of the score line and line up your top and your bottom. Oh, sorry, before you do any of that, I just want to remind you, this is not exactly the same size as um, the back. It's just, it's, it's slightly smaller because I wanted to always have enough clearance for the pages to fold up. So in fact, when you're attaching it, I just wanna show you, you're gonna have about, um, let's call it here, an eighth of an inch from the top edge and then about an eighth of an inch from the bottom edge of your back page, okay? So that it's not sitting right up against the edges because then it just doesn't fold out uh, nicely. Okay, so make sure that you take note of that when you're sticking this down. There we go. Okay, so that is our left hand flap. So now we can make the other elements for this. Okay, so next we're going to work on the flap that folds out from the bottom here on this left-hand side that we just um, glued in. So I'm going to just set this aside for a second. So I already had happened to have a piece cut in the size that I needed, but what you're going to do now is um, cut a piece of, of the cardstock for the bottom flap that measures seven and a quarter inches tall by eight and three quarter inches wide. Okay, so seven and a quarter by eight and three quarters. So go ahead and cut that and you can just pause if you need a second, but we're going to score this now. So we're going to line up the seven and a quarter inch side across the top of our scoreboard and we're going to score this at half an inch because this will be our um, portion that we're attaching. And then again at three quarters of an inch because I'm making that little um, quarter inch spine like I did on the other side. Okay. Just put this aside for a second. Okay, so just go ahead and fold that and burnish that down. All right, and so I'm just gonna bring my album back here. So this is going on this left-hand side flap right here. like so and it should line up right at, with the top of the page okay so let's go ahead and put down our score tape all right and use our method to attach this so i have folded this along the first score line, just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm attaching it. And I'm just gonna start with the one corner here. Make sure it's all nicely lined up. Go, like so, that looks good. Okay, when you, if you do this, it's gonna look like it's too tall, but remember the spine um, will stand up straight once it's all together. Okay. There we go. So then if you just put 
push that back and line up the spine, you'll see that it lines up exactly across the top, okay? So now we're gonna make the flap that, the closure flap for this. And the size of this closure flap depends on what you want to use to close it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ideas of what I would do and the one that I'm actually gonna do for this album. And then you could decide um, what you wanna use and what size you wanna use for this closure flap. But it is going to have a magnet, so I will say that. So make sure it's big enough um, that it can hold a small magnet. You're only gonna use one of the small round magnets on here. Okay, so I looked through my patterned paper and I decided I'm gonna use um, this card, which is a five by six and a quarter card um, for my closure flap. And so the piece I'm gonna cut is going to be big enough to create a quarter inch spine. So we're gonna mat this and have a quarter inch spine and a half inch to attach to. So whatever you're using, um, if you're not gonna use a four by six card, um, make sure that you measure whatever you're going to use. Um, if you like to have a little bit of border, like a bit of matting, then account for that. So you wanna count a quarter inch um, for your matting and then a quarter inch for the spine and add half inch to attach it. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you can figure out um, how to adjust to whatever you'd like to do for this particular piece, but I'm gonna be using um, one of these postcard size um, pieces. So in this case then, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my piece out of cardstock for this that's going to measure five inches by six and a quarter. So there is my six and a quarter. So five by six and a quarter is what I'm cutting out because I'm using this card. Okay, so it's going to sit nicely like that with a bit of um, trim around it. And now we're going to score across the long side for attaching and having a little bit of a spine. So put your short side across the top and simply score this at half and then again at three quarters. And I'm just gonna put this decorative piece away for now because we don't really, I'll set that over there. We're not attaching it yet, but I just wanted to show you what I was going to do and you are free to choose your own um, style. Again, um, this will have a magnet closure, so make sure you leave that space. Okay, so this now we will attach to the back side along this little flap. So we're going to put the tape on the inside here. just open this up and flip it over so I can see what I'm doing and I want to more or less um, center this piece so you can measure it or you can eyeball it I am a fan of eyeballing because I like uh, stress-free scrapbooking but if it stresses you out for it's not to be perfectly aligned then please please go ahead and put in your little pencil marks just measure in the equidistant from the sides I guess and voila, there we go. Okay, so now this section is almost done. We have to just add in a pocket, but you can see what I've done here is we have this uh, quarter inch spine on the top and on the bottom. So when we put in the pocket, we have lots of space um, to add in photos and pictures to the pocket, okay? So that will be sitting here and this folds over up on top like that. Alrighty, so we're gonna go now and uh, make the bottom pocket. So the bottom pocket is going to be three inches tall by nine and three quarter inches wide, okay? So let's cut three inches. by nine and three quarters. Okay, now that looks a little long, but we have yet to score everything. 
So next, what I'd like you to do is bring back your scoreboard and score this on three sides at half an inch. So score along your two short sides. You're gonna do a score line in the bottom, which is where we're going to be attaching the pocket. So all at half an inch. I don't like to make the pockets um, too deep because I like whatever I put in them to be able to be seen when you flip it open. So that's why I'm doing a pretty shallow pocket. So just fold those pieces down. Okay, and then um, what you're gonna do is cut diagonally. I don't want, um, when I fold this over, I don't want all of this stuff to be folded up. It just gets really bulky. So the best thing you can, the easiest way to take care of that is just to cut across the diagonal, across the two bottom corners. So you can use a ruler and all I'm doing is going to the edge of, so you'll see you have a little square here. So I'm just going across like that to create my cut line just so I make sure that I'm fairly even, but you know, if it's a little bit off, that's okay. Just make sure you don't cut off any of the, the corner because that will show. Okay, so I'm gonna cut right through the corner there to the other side. There we go. Okay, so that way when I'm folding these up, it's really nice and tidy. I don't have any extra bulk um, in the corners. So let's just go ahead and burnish that so that it's nice and folded. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring back my album. So the placement for this is on the inside of this piece, right along the bottom of your inside piece here. Okay. Get our score tape, and then the score tape, you can go right to the edge, you can cover those little corners that you cut. That's totally fine because they are, they should be nicely lined up. And here we go. All right, so I don't know which part of the country or world you guys are in. Um, I'm in Canada and we are having a heat wave, which is like really strange. I mean, it does get hot in the part of Canada I'm from, but right now it is like really ridiculously hot. So it is a really, really good time uh, to stay inside and scrapbook. And usually I don't do a ton of scrapbooking in the summer months just because I like to get outdoors and we have really long, cold winters. Um, but yeah, here I am because it's too hot to go outside. We are just never happy, are we? I should be quiet because soon the snow will be coming. Okay, so I'm just attaching this now to the bottom of this page. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. So don't forget that you have your quarter inch spine here, right? So that should fold up nicely and that goes on top. And we will um, be using a magnet here to close this. Okay, so that's great. We are actually finished the left side. And so this album is really coming along nicely. Um, we're gonna work on this middle section right here now. So I'm just gonna fold this up. Oop. And we'll move on to the second, this middle section. So for the middle section, let's start with the top flap. So your top flap is gonna measure four and three quarters by eight and three quarters. go and for the top flap we're going to score this at half and at three quarters and I really am considering getting um, a cutter and scoreboard all in one so if you guys have such a tool because you can see like I'm constantly going back and forth between my tools if you guys have one that you can recommend um, please throw it in the comments. I'd love to know if you have had experience with these combo tools and what you think of them and whether you think it's a good idea or not. Like, I'm not too fussed with having to switch back and forth, but 
I wouldn't mind hearing from you if you've had the experience. Okay, so just a reminder, this we cut this at four and three quarters by eight and three quarters, and we're now scoring at half and at three quarters. Okay, and actually before we stick that on, let's do the bottom flap because it's exactly the same size. So again, you're gonna cut another piece that is four and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Uh, I'm gonna use this scrap that I had left over from a boo-boo that I made. Just cut off these edges. So four and three quarters. Oops, one second, sorry, I have to just trim this piece before I use it. All right back in business four and three quarters by eight and three quarters oh after all that that was too small okay sorry guys once again four and three quarters by eight and three quarters okay I think this could turn into a blooper but I'm just like going to get a fresh piece of paper and I'm not even going to edit this out because this is what happens when you scrapbook and you try and save paper, which I think is a good thing, <laughs> but it doesn't always work out as planned. So four and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Um, third time a charm. Okay. Finally, that's done. And again, let's score this at half and at a quarter. Okay, just fold that in. And you'll notice I've deviated from my cut and, and glue as we go, but that's because these two pieces are identical. So we won't have any trouble figuring out which where, where to put them. Okay, I'm just gonna set that aside. And if you remember, there's, um, and in, on the inside, we have little uh, uh, little sort of booklet flaps. So there's eight inner pages. So we're gonna actually cut eight pieces of cardstock that measure four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's cut eight of those. So four and three quarters by six and a quarter because these are gonna be four by six cards. Okay, so there's one. And two, and I'm not gonna cut all eight. So I cut two, you're gonna cut six more of these. So you have eight in total. And then go ahead and score them on, um, put your four and three quarter side across the top and score them down at half an inch. Okay, so let's make eight of these. All right, so go ahead and make eight of these cards that are again, four and three quarters by six and a quarter, and then scored down at half an inch. And we come back, we will put everything together. Okay, so let's um, bring back our album here and attach the top and bottom flaps to this center piece here. So they're both exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna put tape along the outside here of our fold. Let's go ahead and do this. And then we, we can work on the inside um, pages, which there were, basically we're gonna cut eight little cards that are four and three quarter by six and a quarter. But I'll repeat that again when we're doing it. And we're gonna do kind of two little, it's gonna be like a little booklet, one on each side. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna peel back a corner. And just line this up against the bottom of your um, back page. And remember, again, it doesn't go all the way to the edges. So you have about 
an eighth of an inch on each side of clearance but definitely stick it down to the bottom edge of the page, but just an eighth of an inch in from each side. Go. There's one side. I'm just gonna fold that back so it sits up where I want it. And we can attach the top. So make sure you're lined up to where you put the bottom piece so that they sit exactly on top of each other and just line up across the top. Looks good. Make sure you're not covering the score line at the top. Oops, so we'll, that will get covered up. I just really I don't cover the score line because it won't fold up nicely. Um, Sorry guys, having a bit of trouble lining this up today. I don't know what's going on. All right, that's good. Okay. Um, perfect. So let's open this up and here, oh, I made a little mistake, but no problem. So now let's um, make the cards that go inside that open up this way. These are four by six cards. I'm actually going to switch to a lighter cardstock. So you do not need to use your 110 pound cardstock for this. In fact, I recommend that you don't because we're going to be stacking um, the cards on top of each other and they will just get too bulky um, where they're stacked. So let's switch over to like regular cardstock, like 60 pound. Um, I buy this stuff from Michaels. So let me just grab it and show you what I use. And um, also I think it's good we can save our heavy cardstock for some of the more heavy duty parts of the project that we need. Like all of these other flaps that we've been building. So I'm just gonna close this up and grab my other cardstock. Okay, so I thought I had an unopened package so I could show you the packaging. Um, but anyways, this is just of the lighter version of the same cardstock from Michaels. It's a 60 pound, you can use any cardstock you have. My point is you don't need to um, waste your heavy cardstock and indeed don't use it because it'll get too bulky. Okay, so what we're gonna do is cut out eight eight cards like this. So they're going to measure four and three quarter inches um, by six and a quarter. Um, so let's go ahead and start cutting our first one. So four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Okay, so there's one. I'll just do one more while we're here. Four and three quarters. Six and a quarter. Okay, and so I'm not gonna do any more because we're gonna. You can pause the video and do the rest. But please go ahead and cut out eight of these and then score them at half an inch um, along this six and a quarter inch side. So let's just do one together. Okay, so we're gonna put the four and three quarter inch side across the top and we're gonna score it half an inch because this is where we'll be attaching these cards um, onto the, to the backing, okay? So go ahead and make eight of these and then put your score tape down as well on the outside of the fold like this. And when you come back and you've got all eight done, you can start the video again and we'll um, go ahead and install them into the album. Okay, so here's our eight cards that you should have cut and scored and put your score tape along the edge. Um, I'm also, if you have them, it's not completely necessary, but if you have some alligator clips, um, these could come in handy right now while we're doing this um, little bit of work. Okay, um, if because we're using tape, actually we probably don't need them, but I just wanna show you um, what you could do if you're using glue. So we are going to be stacking these all on top of each other, like so, okay? And then 
so that when we open up the album, we have kind of this little booklet. So the bottom one, obviously, are going to leave this on because this will be attached to the base of the album. But let's just start with um, the first one. So again, this is just a matter of making sure they're all exactly lined up. So important just to peel back one corner and line everything up before you commit to anything. So just check that your, you know, all your four corners are together. Everything looks good. And then we can pull out our tape. And I just like to give it a burnish because I do want this um, binding to be as flat as possible. And that is also why we switched to the lighter cardstock. Okay, let's just grab another one and do the same thing. So I'm actually like to line up along the bottom corners first. Um, okay, there we go. Looks good. Just pull that out. So that's three. And we have one more page to add here. Sometimes, like when you're cutting these, like they're just slightest little tiny variations in size. Um, it's okay, like it don't, don't freak out if they're not like identical because you can always just kind of adjust while you're gluing this down you can make some adjustments but if it's way off then i would just suggest cutting a new piece okay sorry guys i lost my little fold out all right let's start this again see this one seems to be it's like a smidgen bigger than the others but because it's the top uh page i'm not getting too I'm not going to get too crazy about it. Like, you won't see it once it's in the album. Okay, there we go. So, you see we've made this little booklet that we will glue in into the album. If you're using glue, then you probably, you would need the alligator clips. You can just kind of secure um, the spine for like a few minutes while the glue dries to keep it tight. You don't really need it for um, using tape, but if you happen to be using glue, I just wanted to make sure that you had that instruction. So let's go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other side. So the bottom one stays um, intact and we just start adding the new ones on top. So there's one. Okay, so I have my two little booklets ready to add into the album. So let's just open up into the back flap here. Whoops, sorry about that. Oof. So these are going to go stuck down to the back base of the album. Okay, so we're going to have one over here on one side and one over here on the other. Now, there's a couple of things before we stick this down and it depends on your preferred style. So you can either wait to stick these down until after you put down your um, patterned paper on the back page and then you can stick these down. Okay, it does mean you'll have this kind of bit of white spine showing which you may not like and you'll have, you can cover that with decorative paper or you can go ahead and stick them down now and you will have sort of um, this white trim because obviously once you put down, put this down, your decorative paper will only come this far. So it's really up to you of, you know, what sort of approach you like best. I'm going to wait to stick these down until after I put down my decorative paper. And then I will just cover this up with a little strip of patterned paper as well because I want to cover the entire base, cover up all this stuff that's glued down. But they will fit nicely with one edge. So you where, where they're gonna, the placement of these is important, okay? They're not going all the way to the edges of the back flap. They're going just to the edge of where these line up, okay? So they're, again, about a quarter of an inch in from each side is where you will place them. And when you open it up, you will have lots of room for them both to open up, okay? So I'm not putting these in now. We're going to put in the decorative paper in the back and then we will install those. 
All right, so they will sit in there nicely like that. This flap will come over here and this flap closes up. And that's how the album will close. So we have one piece left to do and that is um, this little flap that came out and closed up this whole middle section to keep it nice and tidy. So that also, again, that depends on what you want to use to close, like what's your decorative piece going to look like. So let's take a look at our cardstock, um, sorry, our pattern paper that we're using and choose something and then we'll cut appropriately. Okay, so I've gone to my patterned paper and I've decided that this will be used for my closure flap. So the way that I've measured is um, I've measured the length of this. Okay, so this is this is measuring at about um, five and a half. Okay, so measure the piece this way first. So if so, whatever it measures, so mine is five and a half. I'm going to be adding a quarter inch clearance for a border. Okay, for matting. So let's just write that down here. So I'm at five and a half, and. I'm going to add a quarter inch, which brings me to five and three quarters, okay? And then I need enough to create a half inch spine and a half inch piece for attaching. So that's plus another inch, okay? So in total, I'm gonna cut this at three and a quarter inches um, wide. So again, I just wanna go over that because our pieces that we choose to decorate with might vary. So if yours is a different size, measure how long it is, and then quite simply add one and a quarter inches to your measurement. And that will give you enough for matting around your piece and then half inch attachment and half inch spine, okay? So that's for the width. For the height, all you need to do is measure however, however, um, tall it is, so this one is two and a quarter, and I'm gonna add a quarter inch for trim, so I'm gonna cut this at two and a half, okay? So my measurements for this then, for the um, the white cardstock piece will be two and a half by six and three quarters. So I hope that was easy to follow along. I just wanna make it as customizable for you as possible, especially if you're using different papers um, and what have you, like you don't want to necessarily do it exactly in the measurement I'm doing it because it's tailored to whatever you choose to decorate with. So hopefully that was clear. So I'm gonna cut mine out now. Two and a half. By six and three quarters. Okay. And we're gonna just score this so that we can attach it using my score knife. There we go. So you're gonna score along, you put the long side across the top and score this at half and at one. Okay. Half and at one, so we have our little um, half inch spine, because remember where this is going is over covering this piece here, which sits, which has a half inch spine on the left hand side. Okay, so that will sit right there. Okay, so I don't think I need this anymore. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. And let's go ahead and attach this piece. So if you're following this along and you're making the Metropolitan Girl album, just take a look at what you're going to use there. I used, um, in, in that album, I used a four, a three by four card here. So that's fairly straightforward. You would measure that at um, three and a quarter inches tall by, let's see, four and three quarters, no, sorry, five and a quarter inches wide. Okay, so just center this. Would be good if I folded my little tape the right way so I could grab it. So center this along the back, middle of the back cover. Okay, 
and then there you go. That will keep this middle section nice and close. So just let me turn this over so you can see where I attached it. Okay. And that is it. We are done the base of the album. So now we can actually start decorating, which is the exciting part. Um, I'm not going to decorate this entire album in video for you, but I'm going to show you a few parts uh, that I think are important so that you can see how to, for example, uh, where I'm using magnets and also how to create closures without magnets, which I really love doing because they actually, uh, I feel like they look actually much more interesting than magnet closures. So let's take a look at that next. Okay, so my first, um, I wanna show you this. I've done this in other videos, but I wanna show you a way to create um, a closure that doesn't require a magnet. So remember, we made this bottom piece and I had said, we're gonna put a magnet here and this will hold this shut. You can totally do that if you like. But here's another little trick and I actually think it looks much cuter than a magnet. Um, but you need to do a couple of things before you can do it. So let me just show you how it's gonna work. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before and, and probably know how to do it. But if you don't, and for those who don't, just bear with me for the next 30 seconds while I show you the setup. So when I put this flap down, um, I'm going to, if I, put a piece here that can move and pivot, it will actually keep this side closed. And it also adds like a bit of a cute detail. So that's what I wanna do. So the way we're gonna do that is with a bread. And so I've chosen um, a little tag that was part of one of the paper sets. And you're going to also need your decorative paper, your pattern paper that you're gonna cover the first card with, okay? because what you're gonna do is attach this to here with a brad and then you will stick it down to this part. So, and the reason I do it in that order is I don't need to poke through everything. I just need the brad to be able to rotate um, under this first card. So I don't need to poke it through this piece at all. So we're just gonna work with these two pieces, but you'll need to know what pattern paper you wanna use. So this is what I've chosen. And this is so easy, guys. Like I'm using just, um a thick needle uh, from, I don't know, Making Memories Toolkit, but use whatever you feel is safe. Some people use scissors. Um, just be very careful. But what I want to do is put this close enough so that it actually will hold this down. Okay, if you put it like too far away, well, in this case, this piece is pretty long, but you can see the further I put it, the less successful it is at holding it down. So I'm probably going to put it about here. And I'm just going to... Um, poke a hole through this first so I can kind of see where I want to go with the brad. And I'm just going to lay this down just to double check. Okay, and I'm just going to pick up my bottom piece once I know my placement and just poke a hole through both like that. So I can have space for my brad. So I'm going to go ahead and push my brad through. Oops. So in this case, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to my scissors. I am using quite a large brad, so I just need to make that hole a little bigger. Of course, if you have um, a hole punch or some other tools, you can go ahead and use those. But I really also just try to improvise. I don't like to have to buy tools for like every little thing that I'm doing. If you have them and you, by all means, go ahead and use them but I kind of feel about it the way I feel about um, kitchen um, <laughs> appliances that you buy and then just sit in the cupboard. So I try to really minimize my tools. All right, so I've pushed the bride through both pieces and I'm just gonna fold it. And, and you don't want it to be too tight because you want this card to be able to rotate. So make sure you attach it so that this can move around. Okay, but just secure that. And that's it. And now you can let's let's actually um, glue this down so you can see what that how that works. But I love this method because actually it looks really really cute. Just adds some more interest, um, and it saves you from having to use a ton of magnets, which can get expensive, and they have their place. But I really really like this method too. So let's just stick that down. I think in the Metropolitan Girl album, I did use a magnet here, so you can do that. But And make sure what, you're not getting glue, obviously, where the bride needs to. Um, 
move. And actually the bread itself doesn't need to move. We just need this to be able to rotate around it. But when you come to this section, right, this will stay nice and closed without having to use a magnet. And I think it looks really cute and interesting. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you before we finish decorating the album is where to put the magnets. So we're only using a couple of magnets in the album. Um, I'm using these, these are basic gray, the smaller size, and I'm gonna use three of them throughout the album. I'm gonna put two here on the front flap closure. So I'll show you um, where to put those. So you wanna measure an inch and a half in from the bottom edge and about two and a half inches from each side, okay? So I've already measured two and a half inches from the side, so I'm gonna go in and I wanna place my magnet right there where I put that X, about one and a half inches from the edge. And that's important because that will make sure that those um, have a place to meet up down on the bottom side. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, put one side of the magnets down. So these come pre-glued, which is great. If you don't have that, then I recommend um, using your score tape. And then once you cover them up, um, there's a whole bunch stuck together here. Once you cover them up with paper, they will definitely not ever become unglued. Okay, so that's where my two magnets are gonna go on this side. And then I need to make sure that I put them on the right place on the other side. So honestly, the easiest way to do this is to just put a piece of paper temporarily over, cover that up temporarily with paper, and you can just use some washi tape to hold it down. And the only reason we're doing that is that we don't want those magnets sliding off. So I'm just gonna use some washi tape. I think, I know they have this purple tape or whatever that's removable, but washi tape is just as good. Okay, so I'm doing that because I wanna make sure my magnet placement is exact for the other side. And the way I'm gonna do that is I am actually going to stick my magnets. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. So that's exactly where the magnets need to be. They're stuck onto their, their partner. I'm gonna take the backing off to expose the sticky side. And now the your magnet placement on the bottom piece will really make sure that your album is properly lined up. So before you stick anything down, and I'm showing you this really close up, you wanna make sure that your spines everything is lined up exactly how you want the album to sit before you put the magnets down because once you stick them down, that's how it will be. So see, I've got my edges, they're sort of straight up and down, my spine. I find this easiest to do by standing the book up. So my spines are straight, right? And my front cover is lined up straight as well. So make sure your front cover is nicely lined up top and bottom so now looks good and you can go ahead gently press down just kind of reach under press those down and ta-da there you go there they are so gently peel that back now I'm just I'm gonna leave this paper here um, until I decorate just because sometimes they are so the glue is not as strong as you might like and they might lift that's just a good little trick to keep them apart okay and now this one's slightly easier we're going to put a magnet on this flap so all we do here is stick down let's see if we can do this without paper so again go in about an inch and a half um, from the edge don't go in too close to the edge and wrong side so these magnets have plus and minus which i am for some reason paying no attention to but you take one plus and one minus which seems fairly obvious and that's will stick together so i just peeled off the back and i'm going to fold this over 
and make sure everything looks good and lined up before I stick the other side of the magnet down. That little, there we go. And that's it. Those are the only two places that we're using magnets. So we use three magnets all together. And I did the same type of closure on this inside flap. So I just want to show you what I did here. So exactly the same thing, attached it with a brad, and then that will open this up. So one more thing I want to show you about decorating is just how I'm distressing some of the, the patterned paper and cardstock. So I'm going to be using this Distress Oxide from Ranger. The color I'm using for this set is Chipped Sapphire, and I'm using one of these blending brushes. So I just want to show you, um, in case you're new to this, um, what to do. So just get a little bit of ink on your brush. And then on a piece of scrap paper, um, just put your what you're going to be inking down flat. And then don't start right on your surface, but just start off the edge because you don't want any sharp contrast lines. And then you just kind of go in sort of circular motions down the sides and just pick up some more ink whenever you need it. And just go, remember to always start on your scrap so that you don't get harsh lines onto your image. Okay, and so you can do this or you don't have to. I just, I do like, um, it adds a bit more dimension to the paper, as you can see. And so, and then you can just mat that on top of another piece. I'm actually gonna do this piece too, but I just thought I'd share this with you guys. So um, you can see how I decorate the album so again totally optional and you don't have to do it I just I like the way it looks on the edges and you can go with a light hand or a bit of a heavier hand I'm just sort of I think I have a bit of a heavy hand but just you know see what suits you and that's it so it gives it a bit more of um, dimension etc Okay guys, my next decorating tip is around using glossy accents. So if you haven't used this before, it is amazing. It is, um, I guess like a, um, a resin of sorts. It dries clear and it dries with dimension and it gives you just some glossy dimension on any surface that you put it on. So I use it a lot to accent, um, some of my decorative cardstock so you can see here I've used it on all of the fish to give them sort of that shiny gloss and I put them a little bit on the stamps as well and now I'm starting to decorate um, this card with it as well so let me just show you real quick in case you haven't used it before it's really easy to use you just kind of squeeze it out it comes out in sort of a little stream and then you just kind of push it along with the nozzle until you get as much as you'd like onto your surface so I'm just doing, I had started the rope up here, so I'm just gonna keep keep going down. And I really love that little bit of dimension and a little bit of gloss without like too much bling or sparkle. So, oh, this one is a bit, getting a bit clogged. But anyway, so I just wanna show you there it is, if you can, if the camera's picking that up, that little bit of gloss on the rope but it does really add a nice finish to your product. So I wanted to share that little design tip with you as well. Hey guys, I thought I'd show you who's behind these videos. I've never been on camera before. I hope you enjoyed making this little album and don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it. And I'm always looking for new ideas. So if you guys have some, drop them in the comments below and I'll check them out. Thanks for following. Thanks for playing along. I really love um, doing this stuff with you guys and I hope you enjoyed it too. Have an awesome day.